Hey guys, welcome back to more Homeowner Association stories. In this video, an HOA Karen called the police on me because I would not let her in my house and she then claimed that I am breaking the law. Let's dive right into the video. So I am a long-time lurker and first-time poster after my local HOA president decided to go nuts. I don't belong to the HOA despite the fact that most of my neighbors ended up signing contracts and joining them, they bought into the whole, it creates a better community and the other classic lines that HOAs like to use. I'm not saying that I don't believe some HOAs out there are doing those good things but I guarantee it's a very small percentage. I knew that this HOA was not an exception to the rule of them being bad and it boiled down to one thing, the woman who was in charge of it. I knew Karen from a totally different setting because we used to work in the same medical office with me being a nurse and her being a receptionist. She did not last very long at that job and maybe one day I will make a post talking about how she got fired. The bottom line is I knew her and that she was a Karen from that so I knew I was not gonna join anything where she was in charge. Karen out of nowhere decided that not being part of the HOA was some kind of crime and that I did not have a choice but to sign a contract and join anyway. I basically got letters from both the HOA and her directly telling me to sign the papers and send it back to them along with a year of back pay dues. I was not joining and I was not giving them a year worth of money for no reason, especially letters that would end up going to Karen directly where I knew she would just take the money. One day I found her right up against my house looking into my windows. I nearly had a heart attack just turning and seeing her heavily makeup blood and eyes staring right into my soul. Once I was able to breathe again I went outside and of course started yelling at her for looking through my windows. I tend to try and be nice but when you're peeping in my windows all manners go right out the door. What the hell do you think you're doing? Karen, I need you to let me into your house. I really felt like I hurt her wrong for a second. Me? I'm not letting you in my house. I don't even want you on my lawn. Leave. Karen, I need to inspect the property and the inside of your house. I have to know if you're following HOA guidelines. Me, what are you even on right now? You know damn well that I'm not a member. Even if I was, you cannot just go into people's homes. That is private property and I cannot believe that I'm explaining this to a full grown woman. Go away! Karen, no, you're breaking the law right now. Me? I'm the one breaking the law? You're literally trying to get into my house and were looking through my windows. I was walking to my kitchen. Which sounds like law breaking activity to you. Karen, you're breaking the law by not signing the contract and not allowing the HOA president, aka me, to do an inspection. I refused to let her into my home and she actually pulled out her phone to call the police on me. I've heard of Karens calling the police and making stuff up in order to try and win a situation before, but this was nothing like that. She did not lie on the phone, at least to her internal version of the truth. She said that she needed police because I was breaking the law by obstructing an HOA inspection of my home. Police did come because no matter how dumb a call is, they are obligated to send somebody to check it out. Seriously, you can call the police for pretty much anything and they have to send an officer to check out the situation. One came and listened to what we both had to say, seeming very confused with what Karen wanted and needing her to explain it a couple of times. In the end he told Karen that she couldn't be on my property no matter what. Along with me, not being an HOA member was not a crime. She left my property without anybody getting arrested but it was not the end of things. Karen got what I will call 911 happy. She kept calling them on me claiming that I was breaking the law and when they came she would tell them some random HOA rule that I was breaking. Breaking. I don't know why she didn't get in trouble for wasting the police's time but I have no control over that. They were not gonna arrest me for that kind of thing and Karen was getting more annoyed seemingly every single day. I decided that things were not gonna stop unless I acted and revenge seemed like the best option in my mind. I know people love to sue but that takes money and a ton of time. Revenge is cheaper and faster so for Karen who was not really breaking any laws it seemed like the better approach. I managed to get a hold of an HOA rule book which was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. I feel like Karen wanted the rules to be secret so she could just find people for whatever she wanted. So anyway I go through this book which probably was not edited since it was made just added to a lot of rules that people were probably not looking at much. I went through that entire book and managed to get about a dozen tiny things that Karen's home was in violation of. I cannot remember them all and wish I had taken a picture before sending it to them. One that I remembered was no personal advertisements visible outside the home and Karen had a sign on her garage talking about how she sold crafts. 
Anyway, I took this list and sent it to the HOA, basically demanding that she be fined for it. I was able to send it anonymously too, so she didn't know it was from me. I knew that the HOA had sent her the letter about needing to pay about $3,000 in fines because she started complaining about it to everybody. I asked her what was wrong like I had no idea and she told me the whole story about being fined for things and it not being fair. I asked her why she was complaining about the HOA if she was telling people that it was so great and amazing. She did not have an answer to that and I think put two and two together that I was the one that caused all of this. She was angry and started about three sentences without finishing any of them before just walking away. She did not call the police on me anymore after that and I stopped getting letters basically telling me that I had to join because it was the law. My plan the whole time was to eventually tell her it was me in order to make her just leave me alone anyway. Nothing like making somebody pay a huge fine to make them leave you alone after a ton of harassment. I don't know the details of it but she did leave the HOA board and I think managed to leave the HOA as a whole a short time after that. I don't know if what I did was part of the cause or not but I still think that it worked out in my favor. My experiences as her neighbor were way worse than those I had while working with her but both gave me a clear view of the kind of person she was. The type that only responds to a bigger flame engulfing them instead of water to put them out. And yeah, Ripe Stars, by the way, if you have any interesting HOA stories to share from your own life, then please feel free to share them either in the comments or on r slash Ripe Stories on Reddit. And by the way, I would very much appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel because we are getting closer and closer to 130,000 subscribers. The next one is titled, I don't want my sister's boyfriend to propose on my wedding day. But everyone is against me and my mom said I was ungrateful because my parents are paying for the wedding. The wedding is on Saturday and they just told me that last Monday. They said this was gonna be part of his speech. I said no so my mom suggested that I would instead of tossing the bouquet I would go and give it to her like on TikTok and he would propose. I said no. My mom got angry when I still said please no because this suggestion would be at the end of my party anyway and would not steal from my party. I'm not good at writing these things, so I'm sorry if I'm leaving out plenty, but I cannot stop crying. Am I the a-hole here? Sometimes I feel that I am, sometimes I feel I am not. I want to stay anonymous so I'll not be answering questions about my locations or names. Some additional info from OP on growing up with her sister at their parents' house. OP said, yes, I've never had a birthday of my own growing up. Always my sister too would get a cake, candles and gifts. Then people refused to buy gifts for both of us, so my parents divided the gifts between us. When I was 12, my aunt was very angry that they gave her gift to my sister instead of me. So the next birthday, they hid all the gifts from other people and gave them to me after the party without my sister's knowledge because people refused to share the gifts between us. That was basically my last birthday that I celebrated until I moved out. I told them that I did not want birthday nor gifts anymore, just pancakes for breakfast. Relevant comments, someone said, if I was a woman and my boyfriend proposed to me at my sister's or anyone's wedding, that would be a swift no in front of everyone who matters to him. OP then said it was something she showed interest in and her boyfriend got the gesture. Someone else said in the comments, wait, your sister wants her boyfriend to propose at your wedding? I mean, I'm already on your side and you're not the a-hole. OP then answered, that's what I understood from my mom. I asked her why they would even think my sister wants to be proposed to like that and she said that she has shown and hinted to her boyfriend that she would love that because everyone would witness it. Then OP further said on if her sister is younger than her and if their mother is calling the sister her favorite one, OP said she is three years younger, yes. And yes, I've always known she is the favorite. But now they are not even denying it. Another person in the comments said, get your husband to say in his speech how pleased he is that his beautiful wife is getting her special day and anyone planning on spoiling that by announcing babies proposing or even just football results can leave now. Then he will look like an a-hole if he does it. Also make sure the bouquet goes anywhere but to your sister and prime the DJ to switch the mic off if he tries. You need to fight fire with fire. Also, kick them out if they do it. Have security ready. Another person said, not the a-hole, just cancel the wedding, waste their money, save and pay for yourself. Do it your way. OP answered, I cannot cancel the wedding. It would be very disrespectful for everyone who took the time and effort to attend. My friends and family, my husband's family, I love these people you know. Not my mom and my sister's boyfriend very much at the moment though. Then OP further elaborated on if there would be an open mic at the wedding and response to preventing the proposal from happening. OP said, 
it? No, but besides the MOH and best man and parents, it is free Mike. And I guess my mom would call him up, that's the plan. And by the way, we are definitely cancelling the free Mike. And yeah, Ripe Stars, I'm curious, if you would have been in this situation, what would you have done? I think cancelling the wedding is definitely not a good solution to this. However, I'm curious about what you have to say. Either way, now we got an update to the story and it goes like this. We decided them embarrassing themselves was the best punishment. We decided to, well, F it. I'm marrying my best friend, nothing else matters. I ignored my family for the rest of that week up until my wedding and I was busy anyway. I saw them first at my wedding, my mom had made her speech and then she asked my, I guess future brother-in-law now, to join her. He proposed and literally two or three people clapped beside my mom's sister and well, the rest looked like the meme girl, side-eyeing Chloe, so my husband was right. After the awkwardness, the rest of the evening was amazing, I spent it with my husband and close friends, my sister, fiancé and mom sat sulking for the rest of the night because I don't think anyone went to congratulate them. Mom sent a text later asking if I sabotaged it. I didn't answer because like, leave me alone, I'm on my honeymoon, I don't want drama, but I also don't care what she believes. I will not explain myself. It's not my problem how little self-awareness they have that they don't even understand what they did was actually frowned upon by normal people. And the person in the comments said, imagine the memory of your proposal being a group of people just side-eyeing you, no celebration or happiness at all from them, no matter what happens, she will never be able to change that. Ain't karma. A witch. Another person said, the wedding guests understood the assignment. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, that turned out better than I would have expected and props to OP for handling it this way. The next one is a petty revenge story that starts like this. My dad recently reminded me of this story, so I thought I would share it here. It's truly not a big deal, but I smile whenever I think about it. When I was a young teenager, maybe around 13, I had an older cousin with a small child. She lived in a basement apartment under her parents with her boyfriend and the kid. She called me to babysit for her one weekend and I, being a young teen, was stoked for the money and just to get out of the house if I'm being honest. I was homeschooled and was not allowed to watch TV or do much at home. I went over and her and the boyfriend left. Kiddo and I played for a bit before he said he was hungry. When I went into the kitchen to feed him, every dish in the place was dirty, pizza boxes stacked a mile high, just truly gross all around. I cleaned the kitchen as I didn't want to cook in such a mess and after this became a weekly thing. Every Saturday my cousin would get me to babysit, there would not be a single clean dish in the house and I would clean before I started cooking. This went on for months until I finally said something to my dad. Basically the conversation went like this. Me, do I need to go to Ella's this weekend? I don't feel good and I don't want to clean her house. Dad, why would you clean her house? Me, explain the state of the place every week. Dad, yeah, you're not doing that anymore. You go over there tonight like every other time, but when it's time to make dinner, go around to your aunt's house, cousin's mom, and ask her for a pot and some plates. Tell her you cannot cook the kiddo dinner because there aren't any clean dishes in the house. So that's exactly what I did. I never got asked to babysit again. And the next one is titled College Revenge. In 2010, while I was in college, I lived in off-campus housing with a male roommate who frequently had friends over, which did not bother me, but their lack of common decency really frustrated me. One week, I purchased a significant amount of groceries for myself. I had to go home for the weekend due to an emergency. Once I returned, all of my groceries were gone. After addressing the issue with my roommate, he assured me it would not happen again, but unfortunately, it continued to occur. This one time, my mother made me chicken and spinach. He asked me who made the chicken. I told him my mom and he said it was really good. I never gave him permission to eat my food, so I started storing most of my food in my room. The breaking point came when my mother prepared a delicious meal of salmon, broccoli and sweet potatoes for me. I left the food in the fridge while I went to campus to help make meals for the homeless. I should have packed him a sandwich. Once I returned home, I found my roommate's friends enjoying my mother's cooking and praising it. Feeling disrespected, I took matters into my own hands. While my roommate was in class, I entered his room, collected all of his books and clickers and sold them to a resale bookstore on campus. After that, he never touched my stuff again. The truth is that I would have never had an issue with sharing if he asked me and saved me some of my food. They never asked though and they always ate everything. Additional info, we never had a conversation about what happened, but he stopped eating my food so I'm sure he knew I took his books. I don't think I got more than $100 for the books and clickers, but the money was not the motive. 
And the next one is titled I got them towed. My fiance, 30 female and I, 29 male, barely moved into this house a few months ago, the first week we noticed a car parked right on our driveway which obviously did not belong there. When we went outside, the lady who lived next door asked if this was okay. Her house is right at the corner of the street and there is no driveway. She said the last owner was fine with letting her park there, so she hoped that we would not mind. Our driveway is big enough for two cars, so we said for now it was okay. After our son was born and I had to go back to work, we decided to buy a second car so it is easier for her to get around. All three cars don't fit so we had to tell our neighbor that she cannot park there anymore. Ever since it has become a whole issue. Once she was parked behind me when I was leaving early in the morning so I had to go banging on her door at 6am. She had the audacity to be mad for waking her up. I reminded her that she cannot park there again, so we thought she got the message. The second time was when we were on our way home from the park. She was already parked there, so we would have had to park behind her. I went to go knock and she said she was just putting her groceries away since we were not home and the driveway is closer. This last time when it happened, my car was not working so my brother came to pick me up early. My fiance had to take our son to his 4 month appointment but the lady's damn car was parked right behind her so there was no way for her to pull out of the driveway. She told me the neighbor was not answering the door. It got late so she had to reschedule his appointment. I came home after and called the cops to come deal with this because I was just so tired. Since they could not reach her, they did end up towing her car. Once she found out, she was at my door angry so she was a few blocks down at a friend's house which is why she did not answer but now she says she is stressed because she does not have the money to get her car back and it is our fault, of course. Since both our cars were there, she assumed we were home and if anything we would have used my car to pull out of the driveway. My neighbor kept complaining how effed out we are, going to that extreme, making her lose her car when she absolutely needs it. We have just ignored her since, but now every time we are stepping out, she glares right at us. I've had my car towed before so we know it is a nightmare of a fee to get it out of impound, that's why I ask if I am the a-hole. It's been almost a week since this happened with still no sign of her car parked on the street so obviously she has not gotten it back yet. And yeah ripe stars I will redirect this question to you guys, do you think that OP was the a-hole in the story or not? Please let us know what you think in the comments. And the next one is titled, you cannot put a lien on a house not in your community. So this happened years ago when I was in elementary school, so maybe 15 years ago and I was living in Florida at the time. Anyone who lives in Florida knows how often new gated communities just pop up. So our neighborhood was established and has been before I even moved into the house. The house once belonged to my uncle, we had a neighborhood watch but no HOA. The gated community was finally built and people were moving in. Now we don't have a bad neighborhood but we had some strange colored houses, lime green and magenta with giant metal lizards hanging all over it is an example of one. Our house was simple, hand brick and half concrete painted white, it stood out compared to some of the other houses, the new gated community is a HOA community and they thought they ruled overall, soon people in our neighborhood were receiving fines for their house color choices, their unsightly cars, not approved mailboxes and other nitpicky things. My parents received some for my dad's boat being in the driveway and even our unruly yard. We had a bougainvillea which grows like crazy and we were constantly trimming it. And we even got a fine for our fence, the old fence was chain link and the new fence was a wooden privacy fence, don't ask why we had two different fences, my uncle only fenced in part of the house, it was still good fence so my dad did not want to rip it out. Well, my mom and dad would just pitch anything they saw coming from that gated community as they had fancy stationery. 
This went on for maybe 4 or 5 months, we would revive fines for not meeting HOA standards and other violations. We talked to our neighbors and they received them too, they tried to call and complain, but were given the runaround and decided to pitch the mail as well. My mom received a phone call from her bank, they started to question her about the lien on the house that just appeared in the system. My parents had less than a year left on their payment for the house, they always paid extra every month for the house loan and were always in time. My mom was super confused and said there should not be a lien, we don't have a reason for there to be a lien. Turns out the gated community filed liens on almost every house in my neighborhood, my mom told the bank the situation and called a lawyer. I'm not all sure what happened, but I know a lot of the members of that HOA faced felony fraud charges and it was just a huge mess with a pretty big lawsuit against the HOA board, we were able to pay off the house after the lawsuit. We even had a big celebration on one of the roads, a huge cookout and we met people we did not know before. I even made new friends with some kids that I did not even know existed. People moved out of the gated community due to bad press and a lot of the houses stood empty for a long time. When I moved away there were still a lot of houses empty and it was like a ghost town. Last I heard the name of the community changed and the houses were being filled up. So I guess the lesson is leave our bright houses alone and mind your own business. And yeah guys, with this we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. And also check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Spotify, Amazon, Audible and other podcast platforms. You will often find exclusive episodes and early access to new content. Furthermore, please check out my Patreon by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or my YouTube membership program for even more exclusive stories. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.